in the near future on planet Earth, many kinds of creatures once coexisted on this verdant planet. But after countless wars and untold environmental destruction, the planet plunged into an ice age. Humanity was left with no choice but to migrate on, on in mass underground. Okay, sure. I'm with you. I'm with you so far. When the ice age finally came to an end, humans began developing methods while they were living underground to one day restore their planet to the lush green landscape it once was. Doesn't let me re send this forward any faster. During this time, a large mysterious comet fell to the Earth. However, the progress of restoring their lost ecosystem was coming along well, and humanity was eventually able to live on the surface again. I <laughs> wasn't expecting the good. Well, <laughs> several hundred years have passed since then. Enter a young man named Jason Frundnik. I never. They, I love that name. Okay, being a genius in the field of robotic engineering, one day he came upon a creature he had never seen before. It's what is it? Is it? It, it, it was a frog. <laughs> the first game was a frog. I've never seen a frog before. He was interested with this mysterious creature, Pete. Jason named it Fred and began to observe it closely. I love the crazy... The story is crazy. But after some time, Fred escaped. After some time passed. Jason gave chase and he observed Fred jump into a mysterious hole that appeared seemingly out of nowhere. He was rather astonished by the phenomenon he witnessed. Okay, so the frog is a magic warp hole frog. But Jason followed down, Fred down the same hole, and he eventually found himself in a cave deep underground. Wait up, Fred! I'm jumping down a hole <laughs> in my backyard. And that's where he discovered the large, a large vehicle conveniently placed. Almost as if this vehicle, with the name Sophia 3 on the side, was inviting him in. The door opened up to the cockpit. In order to bring Fred back, Jason hopped in Sophia 3 and set out on his adventure. Alright, <laughs> I like how I like how they reconciled the plot. Little did he know the strange little did he know the strange phenomenon w was just is where his adventure just is getting started. I missed that last bit. Welcome to Blaster Master Zero! I bought this game with my own five bucks during the uh, during the Steam sale. The music's a bit louder than I anticipated, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower that a little bit. Hang on, guys. Can I get... Can I get... Can I get a volume control? I can't get a volume control? Please tell me I can get a... Okay, I'll, I'll just use Windows. I'll just use Windows to turn it down. That's fine. Hang on. One moment. I'm liking the music. I like the music. I just gotta turn it down a bit so you can hear me over it. Alright, is that good? Maybe a little bit louder, a little bit louder. I, I was too aggressive. Okay, that that seems good. That seems good. Hopefully that's good for the uh, for the capture there. All right, so yeah, Blaster Master Zero. Hello, everyone. I spent my own five dollars to get this game. I'm excited for it. I love Blaster Master, and the fact that they remade it and it's been getting good reviews is more than enough for me to get back into it. And it's still made by Sunsoft. Uh, so <laughs> that intro. I gotta talk about it, because the, the original Nintendo game, uh, well, it was different depending on the Japanese and American version, but in the American version, there was just a cutscene. The music's almost too busy, though, for the intro screen, but... There was just a cutscene of Jason going after a frog. That's the whole plot, is Jason goes after a frog, but the frog gets... He, it gets mutated into a giant frog because of nuclear radiation and then he just jumps into an, a normal everyday hole in his backyard. So Jason, in the American version, Jason is just a guy with nuclear, a nuclear crate or nuclear waste in his backyard, jumps into a hole, an average everyday hole, and then finds the tank. So now that it's a magical warp hole and a magical frog, and that there are words, the fact that there's words in the plot, uh, oh, I don't wanna watch the cutscene again. <laughs> But the fact that there are words in the plot is already a huge change. Alright, we're already five minutes in the video and I haven't got started yet. So let's go! 
Oh, here's multiplayer. Huh. So wait, is that... Oh, I chose multiplayer. That's cooperative. How does that work? Will I regret pressing that button? I didn't know... It said there was split screen... Uh, split screen... Split screen co-op. Is this one of those underground forest areas they made during the last ice age? I'm having trouble. <laughs> I'm having trouble keeping a straight face with the plot, but not laughing at it too much. But hundreds of years have passed, but the ecosystem is alive and well. It would seem that the preservation system is still functioning somehow. So wait, is this the surface or underground? Have I teleported to a new world? I like the music. Better keep my guard up. Never been here before. Oh. Okay. The sound effects are different. What is... what is... cursor? Oh, okay. I have missiles right from the start. Oh, cool! I can hop out! Alright. Those... ow, oh, oh, right. You can't fall very far. Oh, wait. Is that... is that... wait. Is that... is that... uh... targeting reticle for player two? Wait, I gotta grab the second controller and see how this works. Wait, is that it? Is it like a Mario Galaxy situation? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> it's like a Mario Galaxy situation where the second player shoots and then wait what is this other function like a, 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 a I'm gonna play both players at the same time I'm two players at the same time I can't wait to get I'll have I'm gonna have uh, Heather join me I mean uh, Rosalani join me on this in this adventure <laughs> maybe if it's difficult I mean or I don't know it could be interesting okay so what does that do does it does that suck enemies in or what I don't know. Okay, well, that almost seems too good, though. Wow. So, wait. And now part of the reticle's filled. Okay. Any other functions? Oh, wait. There's a R button. What is... what? What is this stuff? The second player stuff mystifies me, but it's cool. Yeah, I might switch back to single player in a second, but I'm 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 just I'm learning. I, I gotta get the cursor off the screen. I'm learning about this right now. The enemies feel very similar to the first one. I don't know what these purple effects are. There's like no noises when I'm hitting R and L and going to this weird mode. Can I suck up power-ups? Nope. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Alright, if I recall correctly, if I go down there, that's all spikes, so I don't want to do that. So far, the game is pretty similar to the first one. Alright, I think I think the two-player thing is, uh, is actually... It's kind of distracting. Maybe if I just put the reticle in the corner, <laughs> just like I have the, the the cursor, that'll work. <laughs> I don't know. It feels it feels almost too good right now. The two player thing. <laughs> Fred's signal was definitely being transmitted from the forest area. Oh, and I can I can sit back a bit more. Receiver was being displayed on the monitor. I guess I'm pretty lucky that Sophia has functionality like this. So with receiver, I'm able to locate Fred. <laughs> Which is all I'm concerned about is a frog. That's... At least the plot is still the same. It's still all about the frog. Oh, and then it just put the cursor right in the center of, of the screen. Okay, the game just saved. Okay, I... I just had to see what two-player was like. I'll, I'll set the second controller to the side. And, uh... Yeah, we're properly saved. And I'll just switch over to single-player. Okay. Yeah, easy peasy. Alright. So, so far, this game is almost identical to the first Blaster Master. And I'm liking that. With a few, with a few key changes. It's just been polished up like crazy. But the, uh, the level layout. So far, the level layout is almost identical to the first one. Oh, I have a certain amount of grenades. Oh, I like the music. Oh, 
Oh, and we're getting weapon upgrades. Oh, I like the music here. I forget. Oh yeah, spinning projectiles. That's your deal. Oh, I'm getting huge nostalgia right now, and I love it. So I'm finding more grenades. Oh, and grenades act a little differently. They just explode instantly, rather than, like... In the original Blaster Master, they had an effect that, like, sat around for a little bit. I remember you could throw a grenade and then pause it. And there was, like, a cheat where you could, like, pause it and just deal enemies crazy amounts of damage. Because there was, like, a, a pause cheat. Oh. Oh, you can select the gun upgrades as you upgrade. And do I lose gun power as I get damaged? Because I think that's how it works, so... That's kind of cool, because, like, certain weapons you might not want to use. Like, what if I didn't want to use the shotgun? What if I preferred a lower level? What if I preferred the penetrator? Because... Actually, yeah, I think I do. <laughs> it's all about that penetrator, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You can't defeat my crawling ankle-shooting ability. I am Jason. The mighty ankle shooter. Ow, okay, that falling damage. I gotta press up to grab the ladder. I'm using the joystick. So one of the other interesting things about this game is that there's multiple characters. There's three characters you can choose. Two characters besides Jason, default. And then there's a bunch of DLC characters too, which is really cool. And they have like different flavors on the game and different special abilities and stuff, so that that adds replayability to the game. It's just, this is a really cool game. It's got a lot going for it. Well, so far, anyways. I didn't see a difficulty indicator, though. I kind of, I like a difficult game. I wonder if I'll be disappointed that it's just not quite difficult enough for my taste. But, I don't know, this is fine. I, I've been playing plenty of super difficult games, so I'm cool with having just an average... Did I miss a difficulty selector somewhere? Maybe I did. Options. Is there... Yours. I don't see a difficulty option there. If I missed the difficulty option, I was blind. That's my fault, but that's fine. Oh no! Oh yes, every time you get hit, you do lose a... a level for your gun. That's a bit of a shame. That's fine. It comes and goes. You know, it really reminds me of... It's because it was made by the same the, the same division, I think. But it really reminds me of Fester's Quests, which is kind of funny, because Fester's Quest was a game that was universally hated. But this game is universally loved. And I'm pretty sure they were made by, like, the same people. Because <laughs> they, they share similar sound effects and whatnot. I don't know that for sure, but it has similar sound effects and a similar, like, weapon upgrade system. And, like... You know, like, Fester's gun and Fester's quest, Adam's family was... Like, there was... It was questionable whether or not you actually wanted to fully upgrade it. Like... Was this just a dead end? I forgot that not every single place you go into... Has, like, a point to be in it, except for just getting power-ups. Reflect. Deploy a shield. Uh... Huh. Well, that's an interesting power. I didn't expect that to be in there. But I can't actually... Can't actually attack with that. I have to let... I have to let my enemies attack me. There's an issue there. What if there was a, a wall I could grenade? Did, did, was there any cracks in the wall? I, I'm just gonna come back in and check the cracks. Any cracks in the wall? Throw a grenade at that. Tall, sort of looking tree root thing. It didn't break, but that's okay. There was some cobblestone there. <laughs> kind of looks like my. Kind of looks like Jason's doing a bit of a dance there. Jason Frundrick. <laughs> Frundrick? People. Was that. That was his last name, right? Like Fundrick or Frund. Fundrick. <laughs> Imagine in school, like, Frundrick? Are you paying attention, Frundrick? 
I'm, I'm looking for Mr. Friendly. <laughs> There's no way in the NES Jason... Uh, the, the, yeah, the Nintendo Blaster Master Jason was last name Prundrick, was it? I don't even have to check the manual. I'm not sure if I read the manual, but... Oh, right, there was a weird... I think this looked different. There was some sort of weird door monster with, like, a bald head over here. You have to use the missiles, I think? No? What do I do? I, I need a thing that I don't have. Maybe. Jason, can you do it? It is I, Jason! All right, all right, all right. I'll come. I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. I love the water stages and the fact that you could like swim around and stuff as well. Like, I don't know what my P meter is. What is the P meter about? I don't understand. There's a P and an S. Two different health bars. I lost some S. Is that? They're just two different health bars, I guess. I'm a little confused with that. Oh, cool. Achievement unlocked Sophia Summon. All right. <laughs> cool. Let's just do that. I was going to say, I'm going to have to go back for... Get back for my tank. That I never knew was called Sophia <laughs> before. But yeah, apparently the Japanese version of this game had, like, an elaborate plot. Involving some sort of, like, uh, galactic war and stuff. And, uh, I mean, the differences between the American version and the Japanese version are many. But yeah, one having a plot and the other not having a plot is, like, the biggest thing. <laughs> or a, a a plot that you actually have to, like, read out. I mean, the American version had a plot, but it was entirely visual. It's just, like, frog in tank, frog leave tank, Jason follow frog. Not a single, not a single word, just images. And I did, I did like, like, how it was a silent story. I did really like that. Is it bad to be down here? No, it's fine. Everything's fine. I remember having to earn the missiles, eventually. Like, I don't remember starting with the missiles. I thought I thought you had to earn the missiles and then you had to use the missiles on that, that monster over there, but maybe I'm confused, like that wall monster. I mean, they probably did change it. I'm gonna adjust my microphone a bit, because I, I, I forgot I was playing a uh, controller game and I could sit back and relax. All right, let's dig this awesome uh, walking around music. Running around shooting things. I don't need a giant tank. I got a cool plastic gun. When you're walking side to side, he kind of his janky leg looks like he, it look kind of looks like he's dancing a bit because his leg is moving with the music. Now, I think this auto gun. I think this auto gun is exactly how it was in the Nintendo version. If I recall. Or um, maybe not. It's. No, maybe not exactly, but it's very similar. I think it might have been improved a little bit. Also, I got hit, so my, my attack power got downgraded. For, for shame! Oh, I see. Okay, the direction. That's right. The direction your little joystick thingies are moving is the way they. the way they actually move. They kind of get stunned. Because, yeah, that last one kind of threw me for a loop. <laughs> I gotta say. Whoa, that was a big weapon. That was a big gun upgrade. Okay, we got Striker, a lightning based shot. Oh, it's. Wow, okay, I was gonna say, it's slow. Is it, like, slow and powerful? And it is, it's chain lightning. Oh, wait, what? Oh, hold it down. Okay, so I can't tap. If I tap, it's like that. I can just hold this sucker down. Well, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not just go around burning everything? Burn everything. Everything must burn. And finally, the wave gun. Fires a very powerful... Wide beam. The strongest multi-purpose weapon. Wow, they made it even better than it was. That is undeniably the best. I remember it was good before, but I don't remember it having like a middle part. I remember it just being like the two edges. And I think it was very similar to something in Fester's Quest once again. 
but just better. Iron Brew is similar to a Fester's Quest weapon, but just better. That's I think that's why this game is better than Fester's Quest, is because the weapons... Like, they just took what they learned from Fester's Quest, but improved it. <laughs> it's like, Fester's Quest was a disaster, but we, we have something that... We have the basis for something good. I don't know why, I remember these very slow faces kind of freaking me out as a kid. Like, there's something... S there's just something very disturbing about a giant floating head <laughs> that looks ghoulish like that. That's very tough and just slowly comes at you. I don't know. Like, I was very young when I played this. So, like... And I remember... I remember the weird floating head monsters were creepier in the Nintendo one. But yeah, they creeped me out. Not like full-on scared, but just like creeped me out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, giant brain thing. What the hell is that? Some kind of giant mutant? Damn it, I guess I just gotta do this! I don't know, that's kind of anime main character voice I'm using for Jason. I should, I should just use my normal voice. It's Mother Brain! It's the boss of, uh... The boss of Metroid is the first enemy for Blaster Master. Because that's how powerful... That's how powerful Jason is. His baseline is... Is the end of, uh... Is a plant, though. That felt very... I mean, it's the first. It's the first boss. So. I had the ultimate gun, and it was the first boss. So that's fine. That's... Hyper Shot! Powers up the Sophia's main weapon. And now I can destroy that enemy I couldn't before. Cool. I get the feeling that there's more of this. And who, who made this... Who made this mis... I, I skipped past the story. Who made this mysterious technology that's perfect for the mysterious tank I found sitting around? Says Jason. Is my gun better? It sounds different. Or maybe it doesn't. Owie. Okay. Oh, there's the Metroids. There's the Metroids. There's Mother Brain's Metroids. They're just, they're just floating in the water. And they're bigger than I am. Just imagine the scale. Whenever you're fighting... That's something I always thought about that was cool. It's just like, whenever you hop out of the tank and you're shooting a creature that's like five times your size. Imagine that in a first-person shooter. It's like... That'd be crazy. That'd be like Attack on Titan kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff you're doing as Jason when you hop out of the tank. I'd love to see that. <laughs> looks like J looks like Fred Single isn't coming from the forest area anymore. Let's see. It looks like it's coming from some kind of residential area. Pretty close by. Let's hit the road, he says to himself out loud. Because Jason has multiple personality issues. Yeah, my, my cannon does feel more powerful. It has a beefier sound effect. I saw the triple missile zone. It looks like there's a uh, thing in the upper right corner that there's like an arrow underneath. So I thought that maybe my missiles changed, but no. So I do feel more powerful than I was in the original game. I feel like I feel like there's some things that have changed, but then there are classic enemies that haven't powered up at all. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Can I have more projectiles on the screen or something? I can't quite put my finger on it, but because the game's been polished and I, uh... Sophia is just better at, at a baseline. And everything's smoother and whatnot. I feel like the classic enemies, since they are entirely classic, are just at a, uh... at a strict disadvantage because of that. So presumably there isn't anything I'm leaving behind. Or anything I leave behind in this area is just... superficial, I guess. I don't know. Or not necessary to complete the game. So on we go! I'm not gonna find every single secret in this game. The heck with that. Area 2. And every area has its own music. I kind of don't remember Area 2's music, so... But I think it's different. Looks like there's mutants here. As with everywhere. <laughs> Better be careful. There's crap loads of mutants. Okay, that... That's annoying. <laughs> Those... <laughs> Can't have to do this. Yeah, let's hop out and shoot it. It's giant slugs. 
so what does that thing in the upper right mean? Is it like hot cold or what? No, maybe the music is fairly similar to the first one. I like how the tank, like the tank's design hasn't really changed, just how it, just they just made the animations more fluid. Like how the wheels are just like, the wheels just look like a pair of like, flathead screws, basically. Just a little, just circles with lines through them, but it works. I always thought, I like tanks, so it's a very cool looking tank. So what does this mean? Exclamation point. Thought I was supposed to go in here, or what? Alright, the, the thing in the upper right means something, that's for sure. I guess it's guiding me here. Yeah, I think it's guiding me here. Oh yeah, I got my destroyer gun, that's right. This... <laughs> it's like the wave beam, if the wave beam had three bullets and went through walls. Wait, did the wave beam go through walls? I don't know, it's incredible. This gun is incredible, though, that's what I can say. Oh, yeah, that was one of the things that made the, um, some of the weapons really bad in Fester's Quest, is that weapons wouldn't go through walls, and they would just hit walls. Like, you'd have weapons that would, like, do weird things like this, but they would hit the wall and be useless in, like, tight cord or uh, tight areas. So you wouldn't potentially want to upgrade your weapon fully, because some of Fester's weapons in Fester's Quest if you went into a cramped area, you'd just be bones. And that's really bad. That when an upgrade is a downgrade. There's no reason for me to get any of this stuff. Any cracks in the walls, though? Ah, it kind of looks like a crack in the wall, but I don't think that's official. I'm just looking for a lot of secrets. I thought there was a secret, but it just was burnt. Slots, lots of battle scars. This is an old base, so I thought it was a secret. There's not secrets here. Do, 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 do. I haven't used my map yet. That's right. I've got a map. Maybe I should flip and use it. Oh. Oh, I can quick switch weapons here with my shoulder button. I should know what all my buttons do. Select rear view. Or maybe how to play. Let's see. Okay. Wall climb. If I get wall climb. Oh, this is my top view. Okay, move player, sub weapon, shoot. Okay, I think I, I think I think I've done it all then. <laughs> okay, cool. And yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get new sub weapons besides grenades. Oh, that's cool. That's weird. The signal here is gone. Nothing to do but head to the next signal. All right. So yeah, that was the the quote unquote signal that I was looking for. I can turn off my receiver. Oh, okay, that's that. Stop bothering me. I want to just wander on my own. <laughs> that's fun, I guess. Uh, what else can I do? All right, yeah, that was the map over there, right? All right, well, <laughs> that's informative. I'm just gonna go along the top. I think that's. I think I'm meant to go along the top because that entrance in the bottom was uh, blocked. So. I think I needed some sort of piece of equipment to destroy destroy the bricks there. But there is an entrance down there, so we can probably destroy those bricks or do something to get through there. Yeah, just like these other yellow ones. Unless maybe it's like a Jason thing. No. Yeah, it looks like a tank. It looks like Sophia can fit through there. So it's interesting, the other characters in this game don't necessarily show Sophia, the tank. Oh, that's bad water, that's bad. I thought that was the background or something. Ah, okay. So just like before, whenever you get hit, you get pushed around a bit. Getting hit is exactly the same as how it used to be on the Nintendo version, and I really like that. You have just a little bit of invincibility, but you get pushed around like crazy. So it's like the invincibility the invincibility time is almost entirely offset by the amount of time it takes to correct getting pushed around at random. 
but eventually you can get your way out of a bad situation through brownie in motion, if nothing else. You know? <laughs> Hopefully, anyways. Oh, screw you. My missiles drop, fly through walls. I don't have to deal with that. It's just like my powerful wave beam. <laughs> okay, that's annoying as hell. <laughs> oh, it's a height thing. I want to get this stuff, though. <laughs> when you're just on the edge of a transmitter change. Oh, hot, cold, hot, cold. <laughs> Getting warmer. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. <laughs> Getting warm, getting cold. <laughs> what if you had a friend who played like hot cold <laughs> based on thresholds exactly like that? So when you stepped over it, they <laughs> if you step back and forth, they would do that. That's the kind of friend that this radio transmitter is. I guess my I guess my opinion there is that like maybe maybe they should like have a trigger check where it's like if you if you trigger it too quickly you like it does just doesn't do it for a second like a, a little cool down on the triggering of that sound effect I guess is what I ask for <laughs> although it's kind of funny hot cold hot cold hot cold uh, hot cold I got a radio thing radio Transmitter. It tells me if I'm hot or cold. It is very loud, I'm told. It won't shut up, sometimes it's true. But I need it to get through this game very easily. <laughs> I'm really trying to sing with the song. It's. I'm not making it work exactly. I kinda. I'm just digging the song. So I try to make it work. <laughs> Bibby, Bibby Legion? It's a, it's a Legion of Bibbies. It's. Let's see. He defeated Mother Brain. Let's see. The mutant. <laughs> In the first game, it was like a mutant lord. The lord of the mutant says, let's see. Let's see if he can stand up to this horde of babies. <laughs> it's time for my ruthless horde of babies. <laughs> bib, bib, bibbies. Baby. B, B. He's like B, by Babies. No one. No one has yet survived the horde of babies. It's got intense music, but. I feel like this would be difficult to find the base weapon. Well, I've got this. Like, get out of here with this. Piercing madness. Yeah, I have to shoot each one twice, but I pierce with a triple shot. Still, it's only the second boss, so that's, that's fine. Homing missile, a sub-weapon that fires a missile that pursues enemies. Cool. That's weird. That's weird. The exact same thing that happened last time happened again. At this point, it's becoming normal. And it will be weird when something besides that happens. Oh! It's a missile for out here. I thought it was a new sub-weapon. Oh, I thought it was a new foot-powered sub-weapon instead of my grenade. Oh, can- wait. Can the homing missile destroy the blocks? Is that why I went in there? Because, like, otherwise how do I, uh, benefit? How, how, how does that help me? I don't know. I'll have to find out. But is there anything in the upper right corner? Okay, well... Oh, 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 going over there is not a good idea. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah! I messed up. I just didn't hit the button. Okay, I think jumping in there would be a bad idea. All right, yeah, the, the power-ups down here came back. Yes, okay, good. So, wait, my S came back. My S is my special ability. It comes back over time, but my P is my health. 
Okay. I thought I lost S when I got damaged at some point, but I guess not. And I haven't gone this way. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna homing missile everything I see now. I mean, why the heck not? Oh, it, it went over... It went between screens? That's something that definitely wouldn't happen in the Nintendo version. That's very generous. I like that. Ow. Okay. Situation's getting kind of dangerous. I have a different health meter on foot, though. So if my... If my... If Sophia's doing bad, I can always bail out and fight on foot for a bit. It's kind of funny how when you're on foot in the outside mode, if you fall, if you fall much more than like one person's length of height, Jason, Jason can't fa fall much further than his own height, which is, oh, the tide, it comes and goes. Okay, the poison tide. I get it, okay. Jason can't fall very far. Very much like, uh, do I get homing missiles here? Nope, yep, okay. Very much like Spelunker. It's like Spelunker. I almost wanted to say Spelunky, but no, Spelunker. Another game that's very famous for not having very high, not very tall falling height. Wait for the tie. I have the I have the music pretty loud, but hopefully I have it so that I'm you can hear me over the music. I do. I mean, the music is bumping in this game, so I gotta have the music going. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Music going. I don't want to lose my special gun. I think the Poison Tide would take away my super gun, and I don't want that to happen. <laughs> this gun's incredible. The, the ultimate gun is incredible. <laughs> Based, compared to the other guns, but... You have, to, you have to be playing perfect to use it, so I guess it's kind of fair. In a sense. Kind of. Except for does a perfect player really need this kind of power? <laughs> I mean, this gun is so incredible by comparison to the others. I mean, you have the option to switch weapons, but why would you switch to the other weapons? <laughs> well, maybe the shield. I could see the shield. In a certain situation. Or, I don't know, maybe... It's hard to imagine, though. This game gun's so... It's Crabularva. I am Crabularva. Feel my Crabu powers. I was trying to press both my grenade and tap. I can't tap as fast when I throw grenades, but those those grenades do a lot. Oh, whoa! Those grenades do a lot of damage. Just tap. I get, yeah. If I just focus on tapping, his this health bar just disappears. All right, there we go. It has that little like some of the noises have changed, but it still has that little gurgling noise that that it, that it had in the other one. It's very distinctive. Almost sounds like a frog in itself. The laser shot. That's... It's so weird. The exact same thing keeps happening over and over again. It's so... Ah! Okay, that's that falling damage I talked to you about. That's so weird. It's so dang weird. Every time, it's weird. you think it wouldn't be weird one of these times, but it is. <laughs> it just keeps getting weirder, I say. So laser? Oh, charge up. Wait, so did I have a charge up shot before with the hyper? No. Okay, so I have a charge up laser. I think you had a charge up shot in the first game too, right? I kind of forget. I don't remember the homing missile, necessarily. But then again, there's a lot I forget, so I could easily forget something that was in there. This looks like a hard jump, but a do Yeah, definitely doable. Do I want to go down there? Oh, wrong story. Oh. Yeah, there is something down there. Uh, and there's a boss in the upper right. Okay, so I want to go upper right. Because on the lower left is a, a gate to a new area, I think.
So I think they added that radar signal because originally the game didn't give you a ton of direction. It just kind of expected you to figure it out because, like, there's only so many places you can go in each area. But uh, it is kind of nice that they gave the game a little bit more direction. There go all my homing missiles. But yeah, my energy just comes back. Did your energy come back over time in the first one? I don't think it did. I think you had to rely on power-ups, but... Again, I can't remember exactly. This game feels very generous right now. But I'm okay with that. I can just launch a flurry of homing missiles. Wait, where am I now? Yeah, okay, this is where I want to be. Just there's something weird about those tunnels that threw me off. Okay, you little worm grubs. Oh yeah, yeah, missiles. Missiles came back. <laughs> those little worm grubs are giving me a hard time. Kind of cornering me there. <laughs> What's the signal now? It's different from the others. I'll have to take a look-see. A see look and a look-see. And a glance... And a glance stare. And a, and a gawk. And then a, a glance. A gawk glance. And then a, another... Another... Other synonymous looking words paired together. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Like sort of a gander gaze. Have a look-see and a gander gaze and a... You know, other <laughs> stuff like that, yeah. All sorts of things. So I'll have a little bit of a, I'll even have a squint stare kind of thing. Which is kind of rude, but I don't care. These, these mutants. These mutants haven't earned my my civil behavior yet. They haven't. When they're when they, when they're when they act civil to me, I'll I'll return. I'll return. Return the favor. Return the action. Return the kindness. I haven't seen the li least bit of civility from these these mutants. These so-called advanced mutants. I mean, these mutants, they've advanced so much that they've got, like, robotics and guns and stuff. And they have some sort of lord of the mutants. Like, uh... Clearly they can get along with each other. <laughs> why, why haven't they made any, any attempts to communicate with me? Maybe that's what they're trying to do with the bullets, you know? I mean, they aren't shooting directly at me. Maybe that's just their way of communicating. Like, hi. <laughs> I might, I might just not understand. I'm misinterpolating their, uh, their, their bullet communications. The bullet points. The, there's the bullet points of their message. Are made of actual bullets. And I just don't respect that. I haven't learned to respect that. Uh, na, 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 na. Shoot. Mutants for a frog. Give me back my giant frog. It's a mutant, probably. Or maybe it's an alien, I don't know. It's a special war frog, though. Gotta get my warp frog back. It's not just... <laughs> That's the thing. In the first one, it was just a frog that became giant. A giant mutant frog. <laughs> it was just your everyday frog. Now it's a special, it's a special frog that can make warp holes that apparently lead to the surface of the planet. <laughs> they don't really lead that far. I thought I got teleported to a whole new planet, but I was wrong. Oh, I think that was like a full gun gauge. Well, that's cool. That's generous. So that's just another dead end.
Ah! Aww. Oh, I'm, I, I guess I'm okay. I guess I'm supposed to wait <laughs> in this screen for it to go away, and then come back to the other ding dang screen. That's a little bit rude. All right, yeah, that's how it works. All right, well, the lightning is flippin' incredible too, though. I mean, for groups. I'm not at full health, but I think I can get it back. <laughs> that just deletes them. I don't know. I feel like they are just a bit too generous with that, with power in this game, but I'm enjoying it. Oh dang it! I accidentally walked. You have to. <laughs> I actually walked. You, you, have, you shoot the direction you're walking, so I, I walked towards the enemy and walked into the slime. My weapon's getting downgraded. That's that's the reverse side of things. You either feel invincible and insanely powerful, or weak, <laughs> weak both in attack power and in health. I'm dot. Oh oh boy oh boy. Time to go with the flow. All right, that's not so bad. A little scary, but it's actually poison. Poison's very thick. It's very thick. It's very viscous. It's slow. It, it's got a very slow flow. That's the thing. It's it's only going quick here because it's kind of like oozing up from the floor and coming back down. But it's got very slow flow. The poison. Ah, crap. Why I, I I timed that poorly. I'm just, just not good at navigating these small this small Tetris piece of a platform. Not good at navigating it with a with a joystick here. So this gun, it has like a firing cone that just gets wider the longer you hold it down. So. I can just kind of, like, give it little taps if I want it to stay narrow. And if I do want to engage the spread, yeah, just hold it down to take advantage of it. Which is kind of useful because you can only fire in primary directions otherwise. Oh, oh, I was actually threatened by babies. <laughs> but <laughs> there's still not very much of a threat. If, if you're being attacked by a gang of babies... Throw a grenade at it. If you're under, if you're underarmed, if you don't have like a really good gun, obviously, if you've got a good solid gun, just use that against the babies. But otherwise, a solid a grenade is recommended. Okay, so now saving. Uh, I got lightning. I'm not sure if lightning will work very well in a boss. That's definitely a boss. Okay, so we're fighting a boss without the best weapon. I'm kind of excited. Whoa, that's a huge mutant! Signal's coming from here, too. This does seem similar to one of the early... This actually seems very similar, or is, is a carbon copy of one of the first Blaster Master bosses, isn't it? It seems similar. We'll have, like, do 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 The Toxic Vermin. I don't remember. Crybullis. Wait, can I throw a grenade and pause it? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. Just checking if there was that bug left in the game. Like, <laughs> we left that secret. It was a bug. It wasn't a secret. Pause the game and you can win. Just checking. <laughs> I would feel bad. I wouldn't cheese it. I'd unpause it, but I just wanted... I didn't want to check. I didn't think that was intentional. The pause trick. For defeating bosses. Is there a better weapon than this for this? Oh, the penetrator seems to work pretty well. Give yeah, it the old penetrator. The heck with your claws, I got the penetrator. I'll just penetrate. I mean, the penetrator is basically the, the poor man's ultimate weapon. Crusher shot. 
Powers up Sophia's main weapon, so you can destroy the walls. Okay. You can shoot walls now. Uh, what is a person doing here? Laying unconscious for a... In, in a room for indeterminate amounts of time. I'm, if she's not a robot, I'm wondering how she ate and got water and stuff. You alright? Come on, open your eyes! The moment I held her in my arms, my blaster rifle began to emit this brilliant light. And the light was getting bigger and bigger. Totally enveloped us. So did he get his blaster rifle from... I'm guessing his blaster rifle came with the tank. There wasn't... <laughs> there wasn't a story in the first Blaster Master, so I'm... Um, I, I kind of find any any plot besi besides, like, chasing a frog to be kind of funny. <laughs> Inherently. Who is this girl? Seems like the signal came from her. My blaster rifle reacted to her. I think this girl and Sophia are connected. So she is a robot, I guess. Don't worry. Everything's okay. When you're feeling up to it, I want to hear your story. I'm Jason Frundnick. Frundnick, not Rick. I'm Frundnick. You can call me Frund. I'm Eve. <laughs> There's like better names. You can call me Nick or Jason, but kill call me Frund. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Don't mean to rush you, Eve. But there's a lot I need to ask you. <laughs> I listened to her story and found out the reason why she's here. And learned that she has lost her memory. Amnesia. <laughs> Get out of here with that. You were born yesterday. I'd, <laughs> I'd prefer that story. On top of that, when it comes to tuning up and doing maintenance on Sophia, her skills blow mine out of the water. It's strange. I feel like I remember this sensation, and that's her story. I feel like I have a lot more to learn about her, though. I'm finished tuning up Sophia. Thanks. By the way, now that you're back on your feet, what are you going to do now? Just come with me. Okay. So she's happy to join us look for Fred. It'll be dangerous, even more dangerous than what happened here in the future. But if you're in danger, I might be able to save you too. She's absolutely right. I'm bound to run into things. I won't be able to do go on I won't be able to do it on my own going forward. And if it was as dangerous for her on her own, I'm sure she'll be it'll be just as dangerous for me too. Together is the only way to do it. But I wonder why she's so eager to lend me a hand. Because she's, like, part of the tank, I guess? I'm, I'm calling that she's a robot. Because otherwise, what was she doing for food and water? I, 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 unconscious in a room for indeterminate periods of time. <laughs> Come on, don't say stuff like that. I'm not going to leave you here out. I want you to help me. So, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be dangerous for her to stay. It'll be dangerous for her to go, but she might as well come with us. Because at least I can keep track of her. Time to go to the industrial area. If you want to talk to me, choose the receiver icon from the subscreen. There's lots of stuff I'd love to talk to you about. Chat with me anytime you want to talk. Alright, let's talk then. So now it's feeling kind of Metal Gear, where I can talk to her for, for advice. Oh, I see, and there's my, my new weapon bit. Oh, I just didn't see that, like, diagram in the upper right. <laughs> Alright, so she's describing laser shots to me. Thank you. Yeah, just general Metal Gear style advice. Anything else? I was hoping for something more touching and or personal, like what's your favorite color or something. That's fine. Whoa! My shots look a lot cooler, a lot more colorful. Yeah, you can only have three projectiles on the screen at a time. I think I think that was normal with I think that is consistent with the first one, isn't it? Okay, I'm getting I'm getting grubbed a bit here and I don't wanna be. So yeah, now I wanna go back through here. And then I can break through the walls in these lower areas. And I can get to those two symbols. So I'll do those. Whoops. Oh, I jumped way too far. I had momentum. 
you don't have as much friction as you would expect when landing after a jump. You carry a bit of momentum with you, which is consistent with the first game. But it can be unexpected if you're if you're playing like you know it's it, it's to simulate the fact that you've got wheels and you're landing on wheels, so the wheels the wheels are going to keep moving. But it can be unexpected when you're used to other platformers where your character stops a bit more quickly. But that's kind of the shock you get whenever you play like Mario 1 versus like the later Marios. Like NES Mario or arcade game Mario, both those Marios have a lot more, uh, a lot more inertia, I would say. I guess I'll just use this lower pad. Although, what's over here? There's like a dead end. I want to explore this little dead end. Just some Heelys. Oh yeah, I was over here before I, that's right. I went into this little area. I plum forgot. All right, let's go down. Of course, I could just go off to the right, it looks like. I'm not sure if anything up here I actually need. But they're interesting looking symbols, so I wanna go up there, I wanna see. Like, what, what, what are those symbols? What do they mean? Okay, we're clear. <laughs> I fired some paranoia missiles. Different music here. That's cool. I'm into it. Whoa. I haven't been hit by a baby yet, and I'm not about to be. <laughs> well, maybe I should switch with which weapon I'm using. Yeah, I'll go back to auto fire. Works. Yeah, I like the foot part, the top-down segments. I like the music. Energy Guard. Prevent your gun level from dropping when taking damage. Fire disappears after one hit, but will regenerate over again over time. Oh, that's awesome. That, okay, that was definitely worth it. Gun Guard? Oh, if I moved on without that. If I, if I skipped that, of all things, I would be disappointed, because that is... That's gonna help me keep the ultimate weapon. That's that crazy wave gun. I always thought Jason looked really cool, although he looked way fatter. In the, in the NAS version, top-down suit Jason looked way fatter. They have, like, they have slimmed down his suit and made it way more ergonomic. He looks more like an astronaut in the, in the NES game. Uh, where to now? I'm just forgetting. Okay, there's another thing up there that looks green. So maybe it's some sort of crazy health container. I, I probably want to get up there. How do I get up? Is it over on the right? Can I not actually get up? Oh, I have to go up the other side, don't I? Oh, grumble, okay. Fine, okay, I'll go around to the left. Or is going to the right the faster way? Maybe it is. Well, wait, I can't, okay, I can't descend because there's like a, a floor. Oh, I need to be able to climb walls to get up there. Okay, that's fine. I need to be able to climb walls, I have concluded. That's what I need. That's a place you come back for when you have an ability I do not have, okay. Took me a second. Thankfully, in the help menu, there was a climb walls button that makes it very clear that later you'll have the ability to climb walls. <laughs> so, on we go. I got the most important thing, which is that, that weapon guard. Oh, I love the music in this area for the Nintendo version. I hope this doesn't disappoint. Looks like Fred's signal is coming from this city. Is there any way we can get to a more specific location? Looks like I can only receive the signal, but not trace it. This is the best I can do. It's not your fault. 
that you're not Benny better than what we had before you got here. Hang on a second. Looks like the systems here are still in operation. Stay alert. You have no idea what might happen. That little thing looks ominous. Oh, but he gave me a lot of health. Okay. Is it just a container or is that a monster? Okay, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like the music here, but I think I like the NES version a bit more. Still, so, uh, yeah. This music had a very, this area had a very upbeat music and I like it. Though I'd have to make a comparison. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Just fire up all my homing missiles. Kind of panic there. Okay, what's in here? Let's switch to a uh, lightning shot, yeah. Oh, lightning shot goes through walls. Perfect. Is that a thing? Just checking. A lightning shot is slow, so slow rate of fire, but when it hits something, it hits everything. Hard to argue with. Pretty cool. What do you do? Oh, he's just a straight up laser. Aha, but you didn't downgrade my weapon. Yeah, and I, f I just have to stay cool and then I keep it. Yeah, let's use the lightning. The lightning is incredible. The lightning is better than the flame. Unless the enemy's like right up in my face, the lightning's gonna be the best. <laughs> the lightning's ridiculous. Except for the fact that it's got serious rate of fire issues, it's ridiculous. It's like they gave you this, the letter, or the number six in Xanax. And yeah, if you're point blank, it doesn't have rate of fire issues anymore either. <laughs> so that's something. Are these doors? No? Was that it? Did I just come down here for uh, weapon upgrades? I mean, that would be consistent with this game. A bit, I guess. Well, I got the ultimate weapon, so that's cool. That'll be an asset for later. I guess I should have checked the map to see if any, there was any special symbols here. Because then I could have skipped it, really. Because I, I probably would have done that. I don't need the ultimate personal weapon. Yeah, no symbols, so yeah, we're good. Next time I see a cave with no symbols, I'm just going to straight up skip it. Uh. Oh. Oh, cool. Okay. Is this the way I want to go, though? I'm exploring, so I guess there's no way to know. So these conveyor belt things... That I have to, like, attach myself to. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, yellow is... I could get crushed here. Go, go, go! Alright, now that gets a little more interesting. Oh... This might be a gate to keep make sure I have some sort of like dash ability or something. Not yet though. Uh oh, uh oh. Yee. Okay, that was a little scary. There was a second gate. I could have trapped what happened if I got trapped between those? Is it game over? <laughs> that was a little scary. I mean, I'm guessing death isn't that bad. I mean, this is like a Nintendo game kind of thing. So I'm guessing I just, yeah, I get sent back to a save point. There's a save point there. Oh, oh, stop it. Oh, the red ones give power up school. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, okay, I can write it. I gotta write it back up. Okay, I thought it would be screwed, but there's another thing over here. Perfect. That's fun. Oh, 
he runs away. Uh oh, the jig's up! He's firing missiles! Whee. Whoops! Oh, that was a trap. I fell for it. <laughs> you complete the conveyor ball thingy and it just launches you off. Well, since I took the time to open this up, I guess I should go in here. Although, what does the map say? It doesn't really say. What if I hop in and then immediately step back out? Will it have any sort of identification? Like, have I identified it on the map? Like, maybe you, sh maybe you should go in there. Yeah, boss. Boss cave. All right, so that works. I can just peek in if I don't have the map data. I peeked in and I got a sense that there was a boss in there. Right, I've got the ultimate foot weapon and I can take a hit with it. That's awesome. I mean, I can still lose it, but having that that one extra layer of insurance is incredible. Okay. I, I just gotta walk against the tracks here. That's a little annoying. <laughs> I wish I could jump. Oh, yeah, don't go that way. Oh, no, I do have to go that way. Owie! Everything's chill. I'm just gonna chill out for a second until my guardian comes back. Cool. I love having that guardian. Oh, I lost my super weapon. Oh. I mean, the health would be nice, but... I don't need it. Oh, hello. Well, we got here, then. Obliteration lasers. It's the lair of the lasers. Saying lair of lasers. It's like, yeah, we're lasers, we live here. We're, we're living lasers. It's just a horde of normal enemies. It's not so bad when you have this weapon. Yeah. Some of these mid-bosses are a little lack- Ah! A little lackluster. I say as I actually get shot. So, if I find the right position, I can I can keep the- Yeah, I can keep the mini-boss completely suppressed. A sub-weapon that emits a bright light that stops enemies in their tracks. Maybe useful in dark areas. Alright, cool. So there's gonna be somewhere dark. That I'll need to get through. Hey, stop it! Fire the homing missiles! That guy's gonna get himself killed. Save point in this direction. Maybe I should go the other way. What's in the other way? Just to check. A dungeon I can get to. I should check that out. And according to the map, it has something I want. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, good. I wonder if there's anything up there above. If I can wall climb. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet there is, because you can wall climb. Oh, and this is where I use the bright light thing. Bright light. I mean, I'm sure I can find my way around just by, like, wandering. Oh, wow. How do those... There's some sort of... There's some sort of, uh... Electricity that's outside of... Typical light. <laughs> somehow, somehow this electricity generates no light, and I can't explain it. Because <laughs> I can see it. You can see the electricity, but it generates no light. It's... I was gonna say it's outside the visible light spectrum, but... That doesn't really make sense, because I'm seeing it. I don't know. I don't know how this electricity stays hidden in the darkness until you use a bright bomb. Maybe the bright bomb helps you visualize the electricity, because it is outside the typical light spectrum, but then, like... I, I, I can't science away this nonsense. <laughs> it's magic. It's magical mutant electricity. Alright, I'm healed up. So that area on the right's just a dead end? Sure is. Bomb! I wonder if these bright bombs would crack open secret areas. That was kind of a waste.
Well, here's an opportunity to check. Bright Bomb. Nope. <laughs> okay, that, that checks out. Oh, I have a different count for grenades. Oh, that's cool. Oh, this is where I was actually supposed to go. Map 3. Well, then what's on this end? That it, up, up this dead end? Probably not worth my time at all, but let's check. A red dude? Just an ambush of... An ambush of little guys. Okay. It's the revenge of the little people! We may be little round mutants, but we will have our revengeance upon you. This red one, this red, this little red ball is our leader. He's our ace. He's the greatest one of us. And now you have slain him. There's a secret chamber up there if I have wall climbing. That makes sense. Oh, 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 there's another extra- Ah! Oh no! Oh, I got crushed, but it didn't kill me! Oh, that's cool! That's actually cool that it, you got crushed but not killed. Oh, in the Nintendo game, you would have absolutely been killed for being crushed. Okay, this, this enemy generator over there is causing me no end of pain. Stop it. Stop it. I want the health. Can I get some health? Because I'm, I'm actually hurting a lot here. I got crushed by a ceiling, and that's not a, not a good feeling. There we go. Wow, I'm surprised. This game is very merciful. In the Nintendo one, you would have absolutely died for being crushed. That's the, that's the Nintendo way. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm at full health. I'm not sure if I needed that. Well, that, getting that item probably got me to full health. The extra flashlight on the hull of uh, Sophia is a nice touch. It's a, a bit weird calling the tank Sophia, though. I, d I never knew the tank's name. It's all the way up. There we go. This one goes up further than I anticipated. Wait, was I keeping it up by shooting it? Yeah, I was! That's pretty cool! That's like a nice little extra touch I didn't expect. What is this? Lipo! Just plus one max health! Okay, cool. That I don't I remember anything like that in the first one. Whoa, a lot of enemies in this one. Uh, am I actually... Should I actually be going in here? Uh, can I skip this one? I want to check. Uh, oh, let's see. We can skip this one. Ha ha! Checking the map saves time. There's nothing special in that, but just power ups that I do not need. I don't need extra ammo for my specials and junk. I've already got the ultimate personal weapon. Hover pack. Oh, fun. Looks like we'll need it. Looks like Sophia can jump, or hover thanks to this chip, but he uses my SP. But what's it doing here? What's any of this doing here? <laughs> That's something that the, something that Jason in the NES never asked. But 
That's Frontnik. That's the difference between Jason, the old Jason, and Frontnik here. And, and Front. <laughs> I like just calling him Front. What's that gear? It's freaking huge! Sounds crazy, but that's a mute. Crap, did that thing lure us here using the chip as bait? Everyone loves delicious chips, Jason. Here it comes. The uncontrollable engine. Central gear. It's a nuclear equipped walking. walking cog. Central gear. I came here to destroy it. Central gear. Oh wow, okay. Fire the stinger snake! Fire it at central gear! I'm just I'm just thinking of Metal Gear jokes now. No one can stop that nuclear equipped walking paddle tank known as Central Gear. Snake, I feel terrible. I'm the scientist who created Central Gear. I, I'm losing sleep over it. Central Gear is as bad as making the nuclear weapons that my grandfather made. I feel so bad, Snake. <laughs> That's okay, Otacon. I get it. It's hard. It's hard having to live with having made Central Gear. I'll defeat it for you. <laughs> well, I'm having too much fun with it. <laughs> I love Metal Gear. Can love bloom on the battlefield? Central Snake. <laughs> Or what, what, they, what was the material they ever used, like, Gash's Snake? Oh, that's a fun sound. That definitely reminds me of a Nintendo kind of sound. Alright, eat some missiles, because I don't feel like getting... I don't feel like hopping back up there with the hover pack like I'm supposed to, so just, just take a missile to the eyeball. I'm, uh, I'm just going to sit back here in the corner. Oh yeah, I mean, fire the stinger. Fire the stinger! <laughs> Unlike Snake, I can do it. It's no good, I can't do it. Made it out alive. Can't believe that thing was a mutant. Known as Central Gear. Surprise too. I truly believe that you could defeat that thing. It's all thanks to your support, Eve. You're welcome. Hey, Fred's signal's disappearing. What's going on? I can't get a read on his signal. Yeah, I got nothing now. Sorry. If I would have kept an eye... Don't sweat it. If you find it again, let me know. How could you let... Jeez, so... How could you let Fred get away? How how could you? It's, he's a frog. What, he just leap out of the door when we weren't looking? There's nowhere for him to go. I mean, how how hard is it to chase down a teleporting magical mutant frog? Oh, you mean he, you, you think he teleported it away? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, he probably teleported it away. Still, you should have seen that coming. <laughs> you should have told me about Should have told me about that. She's dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Jeez. I mean, yeah, we're trying to pursue. We're trying to pursue a... A magical warping frog. <laughs> Is this what Jason was trying to do in the Nintendo version, is chase down his frog? Except for in the in the Nintendo version, his frog wasn't a magical warping frog. It was just a giant mutant frog, so there's no way it could get away by warping. That doesn't check out. That doesn't... You can't retcon that. But I'm guessing, like, the plot of the original game, I guess, didn't happen. It's like a reboot situation. Alright, I guess I can't get to that boss right now. Or can I? It seemed like there was something I was missing to get to that boss. Did I get anything new recently? I, I, I might be forgetting my situation. Oh yeah, I got Hover. So, yeah, what does Hover help me get to? There's gotta be something. Somewhere over here. 
Whoops, I switched my sub weapon. Yeah, it looks like you could hover up here. That's right. I thought it was wall climbing, but I think you're supposed to hover up here. Yeah, alright. That works. Maybe I could go up that other place that I thought I needed to wall climb. Ah, and we're back here. So yeah. And it's showing a red. It's showing a red square like I'm supposed to go back there. Because I can't go this direction yet, right? I'm curious. Yeah, it looks like there's a door I can go over here. Why should I not go this way? Like, the, I, I'm pretty sure the game is telling me not to go this way, but why though? Why though? Oh, because I probably don't have the, uh... Probably don't have the booster power to do... Or can you just... There is no green conveyor belt, is there? Oh, it's on the wall. You specifically need wall climbing to open up those doors. Ah, okay. Fair enough, then. I just had to know why. So I kind of like the fact that you could turn off the transceiver, receiver thing, and just play this game like it was in the old days, and, and you know, <laughs> have, find, find your direction entirely on your own if you wanted to. But I do, I do greatly appreciate that it guides you, because, yeah, I mean, spending time wandering around decidedly isn't entirely fun. Although, I mean, it is fun, like, going around discovering things. I like that sense of discovery and wandering in the game. But some of it is unnecessary. Or if you are if you have bad luck or a bad sense of direction, it could easily make the game not fun. So I, I think it was more fun back in the old days because I had more time to kill. And it's just like the expectation for games was kind of different back then. Kind of like how... Um, like, I really, really had fun with Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. And that's one of those games that, like, it's because I had a lot more time on my hands. Because that game does have a lot of grindy, grindy bits and time waster bits. And just very cryptic nonsense that uh, you just have to have to work your way through, basically. And, uh... Yeah, so, I mean, retroactively, I probably wouldn't like that game as much playing it today as I did playing it as a kid. When I only had... When I only had, like, ten different Nintendo games available to me. It really does change your perspective a bit, naturally. Because it is a really fun game to, like, get through. There's... There's a lot of really cool moments and stuff. It's, it is a rewarding experience. It's just... Just some of the puzzles are stupid difficult to get through. It's rewarding to get through it, but they're just, like, stupid, confusing, and difficult. <laughs> Or you just, like, you just need to talk to the right villager, and you might miss that villager and stuff. Like, you could... I guess what I, I'm trying to say is you could so easily get stuck forever playing <laughs> playing Castlevania 2, and you could easily have a terrible time. Like, it's one of those games where you kind of have to get lucky to avoid having a terrible time. <laughs> and that's not good. But you can. If you can get- you can get through the ga whole game, and if you can, it's a really rewarding experience, but... You know, today, if you, if you play Simon's Quest, I would almost... I, I would recommend playing it with a FAQ on hand. Like, maybe not, maybe not play the whole game using the FAQ, but, like... Using the FAQ the very minute you get stuck, you know, like... Or, like, as soon, if you're, like, stuck for five minutes, it's like, we'll just get the FAQ, because you could be... You could be stuck at a point that's absolutely ridiculous and obscure kind of puzzle. <laughs> and, uh... You don't really have much way of knowing.
So it's like that that classic kind of difficulty of just like figure it out for yourself kind of plot. Like, yeah, I wouldn't really know to go back to Area 1 necessarily right now. So the game is doing me a favor with that. Like, I think that's one of the things you had to figure out in uh, in Blaster Master. In the, in the Nintendo Blaster Master. So yeah, they're doing a fantastic job with this game. I really like it. The only question I have is, will this game get more difficult? Or was there a difficult mode that I uh, missed when I started this? I really like these water areas. They're fun. I guess I have to swim through here. Is there a reason I want to go down here? There is a boss. There is a boss I did not kill yet. Let's go kill this sucker. This isn't a boss I could have killed in Area 1 right from the get-go. Well, I'm going to be all sorts of overpowered for this sucker. Makes sense that that's a dead end. Oh, and that's like pipes full of water. I didn't quite get it. I was worried that was some sort of force field that I'd get shocked if I touched. Oh, don't touch it! That's a force field! Jason, that's just a pipe full of water. I have trouble telling the difference. My my eyes are... My eyes just pixelate everything. It's I have, I have pixelated vision. I, I'm Jason. I'm Jason Frundnik. I have, I have weird pixelated vision. It's a rare disorder. Don't make fun of me. Sometimes I get confused by clear pipes full of water and laser beams. And I get terrified by them. It's the Lair of a Thousand Vivos. Or Vios. These are the guys that freaked me out as a kid. They really freaked me. They creeped me out. You guys creep me out with your one eyeball and your exposed brain. One of the things I remember I remember specifically the thought entering my head whenever I saw this enemy, like It's like a creepy alien cyborg face. So it's like it I had that crazy thought, like, uh it was like a really crazy thought because I was super young, but like what if everybody I I know and everybody I've ever known was like a robot in disguise? It's like, whoa, what a horrifying thought. Like even your parents? Yeah, even my parents. How can you how can you trust anyone? They could just be a robot in disguise. It's like, well that's a dumb thought. It's like it was like a really, really dumb thought, but it scared me because I was like I was like five years old when I thought of it. So it was like a for a five-year-old, that's like a deep, super deep thought. And so I guess there's that extra level on it that creeped me out. Because it caused me to have like this existential thought. What if everyone you ever knew, or you know is, or ever knew is a robot? <laughs> or like some sort of alien or something. You know, something in disguise. What if your whole reality is just like a lie? <laughs> like one of those weird Truman Show kind of thoughts. And yeah, that's a, that's a deep thought. It's a deep thought when you're that young. Because yeah, I know what... Yeah. I know, yeah, I was like five. I was like four or five years old when I had that thought. But, I mean, I actually had a fair amount of those, like, deep existential thoughts, too, as a kid. Like, you know, like, uh, around that same time, I really came to grips with, like, that idea that everybody's gonna die, you're gonna die, everybody and you know is gonna die someday. Which is a terrible thing to say. A terrible statement at face value as it is. But it's true. And all we can hope for is that we live fulfilled lives and die good deaths, as it were. I mean, well... I mean, though, who knows when we figure out the secret to immortality. <laughs> like, I, I feel like that's as scientifically possible, too. So we can, we can always hope for that. Anyway, so we got Thunder. Uh, fires a powerful lightning attack. Oh, straight down. I don't think that was in the first game. Or was it? I mean, it seems kind of familiar, actually. I'm not sure if it was in the first game. But yeah, we I could have had this for a while. So yeah, I go back and I use the hover ability at the, first, at the start area. That's right. That is. This is just like... Uh, 
we're going to area four. This is just like the original. And it was like a sewer area, and it had like really creepy style music. Because, uh, like I remember the music was like this s slow descending thing that had like one of those gurgles at the end of it. Do 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do. And yeah, it's the exact same thing. You needed to have the hover to get up here. And it did feel like a momentous occasion. Like, wow, I'm really making progress in this game. I'm I'm back at the beginning, but I'm all powerful now. You you beginning these these enemies at the beginning seem so fearsome, but now I've gotten better at the game and I've got better weapons, so I I get to flex on them a little bit. I can fly around and hover and use my lightning and, and, and other powers. See how powerful I am, guys. You rem you guys, remember me? <laughs> Look how much I've grown. I found Jason. I uh, found Fred's signal again, Jason. Where's it coming from? Pretty far away. The glacier area. Let's make our way over there. So the music still has kind of a creepy quality to it. And it still has like a descending quality to it. But it's a little bit more all over the place. They've, they've certainly added it to the complexity of the song quite a bit. I really like how they've added a lot to the game, but captured the feel of the original. They've done a really good job. Like, it really does feel like the original people who worked on this game, or worked on... The people who worked on the original game worked on this game, too. Oh, I turned my receiver off. Turn that back on. I guess. I want to be able to receive transmissions. Somebody could have been sending me all sorts of messages. Wishing me, like, happy birthdays and, you know, well wishes. I could have, I could have missed the message from my, from my grandmother. Nothing in the cave? Let me peek in and peek back out. Because I, I don't think it identifies the caves without the map. Anything in there? Did I see anything in there? Nothing. No reason to go in that cave. That cave's stupid. It's like the cave of stupidity. It's where stupid people go to get more stupid. Sounds like my kind of place, but uh, maybe later. Sounds like a place I'll go later to hone my crafts. But for now. This is one deep and poorly designed sewer, I realize. Like, there's gonna be so many pools of... There's so many pools of stagnant sewage. Who designed this place? You really gotta think about flow more. No wonder it's so rancid and full of, full of mutant life. I think I've missed a few things here and there. Okay, yeah, I'll have to go back. Clearly that's a one-way door I need to come to the other side of. I really like the way this game controls, too. This, like, the jumping, the feel of the jumping and everything. Although it was the same for the original, too. This has a nice feel to it. That's definitely something you want out of your games. Is just having a nice, nice feel to the control style. Okay, let's just peek in and hop back out. Oh, there's other humanoids. Maybe they want to communicate, hug. And, uh, and talk about things. Hey guys! How's it going? What's up? You wanna, do you wanna talk? No? I tried communicating. Ow! Hey. Alright. <laughs> Just gotta walk around. Didn't have anything interesting to say. Whoa! Whoa! 
That's new. Oh, I'm supposed to get up on that or I get washed away. Although being washed away didn't really hurt. Although I guess if I get washed into that, it's bad. Ow! Okay, so actually being washed away does hurt. Never mind. Oh, I got hurt last time too. I just didn't notice. Okay. I definitely don't remember anything like that last in the, in the first uh, Blaster Master. That was pretty cool. That threw me for a loop. It's water that pins you to walls. The firepower on this weapon seems so crazy excessive. Oh, what's on here? I've got too many pads to choose. Can I get a map of this place? Okay, cool. I am keeping a map of this place. That's good to know. Cool stuff, but I don't need it. Bunch of eggs. Bunch of caviar. Although I wonder what those would have hatched into. We'll probably find out later. I'm, I'm not interested in finding out right now. Oh, well, we found our way to roll the boss, so who cares about anything else? It's it's Treadle's stack time. Oh, okay. I guess this is what they were going to hatch into. These things. I guess I, I stun enemies sometimes. I stun enemies most of the time. That seems excessive. Yeah, wow. Do I stun every time? That's incredible. How are they supposed to challenge me with this kind of firepower? All right, tell you what, tell you what. I'm gonna I'll go back to this weapon. All right, that feels a bit better. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> just go back to the this, the first weapon. Still felt a bit easy. Maximum shot. A shot that shoots a wider beam. Hold the shoot button. So is that for my tank? Maximum. Maximum shots. It does not go through walls though. It's just a wide shot. A little, dis ah, a little disappointing, honestly. I think I prefer to have the laser. Being able to pierce through walls is amazing on demand. Let's go back to laser. Oops, okay, well, let's go down here. I think I'm supposed to be going down. Uh, maybe not that far down, though. What are we doing? Oh, interesting. Did, did I want to do that? I, I cleared your drains. <laughs> Thanks for calling Blaster Master Plumbing Services. I cleared the drains. Don't worry. When you've got a huge sewage drain problem, call the Blaster Master. We'll blast... Blast that clog right out of there with my, with my clog blasting plumbing tank. That's what it's, that's what it's for. The Sophia Three, it's it's for plumbing. <laughs> Turns out it's for sewer maintenance. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that that ultimate tank you found. Yeah, that's our civilization's uh, sewer maintenance vehicle. That's like that's one of our worst vehicles. Our our civilization's so ridiculously advanced. That's that vehicle's a joke. You thought that was a cool one? Yeah, it, 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 it comes with a sewer maintenance cyborg, too, yeah. <laughs> this is the lowest, this is the lowest, lowest, scuzziest part of our civilization.
This thing's this thing's annoying. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, that bee was murdering Jason so fast. <laughs> oh. Which would make sense. Imagine getting stung by a bee that's as big as you. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I don't know, like... That, that sounds pretty bad. Speaking of which, they just released bees and uh, grounded as well. That game. Rosa and I have been playing that a lot. Rosa especially has been playing that a lot. Uh, but yeah. That, that's like, some people have a really bad reaction to bees. Imagine, imagine swelling up so much that you could potentially just get. Whoa! I like, I like the. I like the background that's like got like what do they call it like parallax? The multiple layered background kind of thing. Reminds you of like Ninja Gaiden. We got a huge mutant here. Is that another frog? Maybe it's my imagination, but I can't I can't help but think that it kinda looks like Fred. This thing is nasty, it's so slimy. Eve. I totally get what you're saying, but let's focus here. Could be Fred's cousin. Alright, here we go. Fred was a giant frog. Earth-shattering tyrants. Ribiroll. Ribiroll? That doesn't sound like the scary name of an earth-shattering tyrant. Ow, okay, he's stepping on me, though. Stop it. Oh, uh, I don't seem to damage him when he's outside the screen, so that's an issue. Oh, he's eating- he's eating the flies to get his health back, how dare you! Or I mean the bees. Okay, here he comes. Oh, ah, okay, I have, I'm having trouble timing the jumping to get through without getting stomped, but that's fine. I'll just, I'm just gonna shoot him like crazy. All right, no food for you. Oh, and I got healed. Perfect. Okay, and oh, I thought you were gonna keep jumping, you. Ow, ow. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just, I'll just shoot him like crazy. That works. Just fire bullets, massive amounts of bullets into his gaping maw as I drive into it. Oh. A key. Key one. A key that opens the sewer shutters. This key works around here in the water area. We'll be able to open shutters. You don't even... Something about using your blast, blast rifle? You don't have to exit Sophia. Just get close to the shutters. You'll be able to check security. However, if Sophia can't get close to a lock, you'll have to access them on foot. Got it. We can get over to the glacier area. Hey, even more of the enemies now than there was before? Or signals? I've been skipping a bit. Fred's signal cell hasn't moved. But those mutants are gathering. There's a chance they might be after something. Let's get over there as quickly as we can. The mutants are after Fred. They want his super frog abilities. He is the ultimate frog. And they know it's... It's the ultimate frog that can control everything. So yeah, <laughs> they they gave this game a plot, and the frog, Fred, is central to the plot. I love it. I, you know, I half expected them to, to entirely write the frog aspect out of the plot entirely. Because, I mean, the Japanese version of the game had no frog whatsoever. No frogs at all. Only, only the American local is all this frog business is entirely thanks to the American localization. I like how they took that story and made it canon. I wonder if anyone in Japan is kind of a, a, annoyed by that. Like, uh, Galaxy, Galaxy Wars Metal something. That's what it was. Like, Galaxy Wars Metal something. Galaxy War Metal something didn't have a frog. It was about a galactic war with a tyrant. Give me back that plot. I wonder if there's anyone in Japan that would... I'm sure there is. Something in Japan that's like... Don't Americanize my game. How dare you. How dare you accept the the, the localization. Some foreign localization of, a, of the plot as canon. And I totally feel them. I totally get that perspective. If, if, you know. At the same time though. it's It's ridiculous that it's about a frog. It's like that the whole the whole plot is about a joke, a mistranslated joke, and I kind of really like that. It's, you know, if it had been a bad mistranslation, like a really bad joke, 
I mean, it kind of is, but it, it kind of makes the game better and funnier. So, I mean, since the whole frog aspects work, frog aspect works, like, that it, it tails a tail visually and very fast and silently, I, I came to really love the stupid frog, frog plot. Even though the frog plot of Blaster Master makes no dang sense whatsoever. It's funny, and I'm glad it's- I'm glad that the plot's all about that in this one. But now- now the frog's important for some reason. It's not just a pet- you know, it's not just- At the same time, though, there's a pl there's certainly an element of the plot that's changed. It's not just a person just wanting his pet back. Which I think is kind of identifiable on a certain level. You just love your pet. You love your pet so much that you're willing to do anything for your pet. Your pet frog that probably didn't have that long of a lifespan to begin with. It's just a frog, Jason. But no, this is an all-important, an all-important teleporting mutant frog. I mean, that's definitely worth risking your life for and jumping down into a hole. If, if, if your frog, if your pet frog jumped into a hole that you had no idea what was at the bottom of it, or like into a portal, would you jump into that hole slash portal? I definitely would not jump in the hole. Maybe a portal, because a portal, that's that's magical. That's like crazy. Like I mean if a, if the frog jumped through the portal and it really looks like wow, magic sci-fi portal. I mean that's something that's like once in a lifetime. I mean maybe. Maybe maybe that. I don't know. <laughs> Then again, though, I've got a lot more to lose. I've got a very good life for myself, so I probably wouldn't nowadays. When I was younger, though, I would totally go for the magical frog portal. If I was, if I was in, if I was in my twenties, twenties, Deacon would have done it. Not anymore, though. I'm not anymore. I'm too, I'm too old for magical frog portals. <laughs> you know. I'm at that age where I start saying I'm too old for things, and particularly, particularly magical or magical or mutant frog portals to another other worlds. I, I'm I'm too old for. <laughs> I'll let somebody else handle that noise, <laughs> that nonsense. I'll find I'll, I'll find some young fool to go through that portal first, <laughs> and if he comes back and says like, "Oh, it's fine. It's a, totally a cool world over there." And maybe. Maybe I'll be the, the second person. <laughs> Alright. I think there was another gate down there I could have used. Unless it was, like, too far away. But I'm supposed to go this way, so... Whoops, I hovered in the wrong spot. I'm kind of ignoring the bees now. I'm kind of ignoring a lot of enemies now. <laughs> I just don't have time for all this nonsense. So wait, I'm supposed to go to the right here? I'm gonna get hit. No, left, and then right. There's a little area down there to the left I haven't done, but whatever, I, I'm fine. Hopefully I haven't missed anything too important. Alright, and then right over here... What about that... dungeon? Oh yeah, the dungeon's got nothing on it. Or I guess I went to that dungeon earlier, so that's... Either I cleared it out or I skipped it. But it's got nothing for me. Aha, yes. And this needs a key. And I will save. <laughs> it's, this is one of those games where you can jump up ladders. And it's faster. That was true in the original, and it's true for this one, and I don't like it. Uh... Now, if I recall correctly, falling a greater distance was potentially fatal? Was it? I feel like this kind of fall could be fatal for Jason. There's only one way to find out, though. 
Oh, there's the water. Oh, there's the water. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait a second. Am I gonna die? Oh, but I can't really. Oh. Oh, I could I could grab onto that ladder over there, maybe. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Because if I fall over to the right, I think I might get killed. Can I can I climb out on this? How do I get out of here? How do I get out of this? Maybe I can. Ah, okay, I can pop. Just a little. How do I pop? How do I pop? Okay, there we go. That was that was surprisingly difficult for some reason. It's like I I could only pop up by pressing straight up, but I'd have no sideways momentum, and it happened erratically. Okay, so. I'm just gonna jump off, straight off to the right and hold up, and hopefully I'll grab the ladder. Ah! Oh, it is instant death. That is instant death. You do die. This, the falling death is still there. Okay, well. I mean, if there's ever an area to die, this is the one. Okay. But. Yeah, if I'm just holding up, I'll grab the ladder. So. Okay, so. I just don't wanna... Okay, yeah, yeah, the, the ladder is in line with that broken ladder. I just gotta, I gotta use that as my guide. I'm overshooting. I'm overshooting. I thought I had to just completely go for it. Alright, well, that's fine. There's two dead Jasons at the bottom of this hole, but clone Jason number three is gonna get it. Son of a bitch! <laughs> I barely missed. That's fine. Whatever. I don't care. How? Okay, so when characters do stuff like this in video games, it always mystifies me. Because, like, what kind of arm strength would you need? Ah, goddammit. Like, it's a game mechanic thing where you don't take falling damage. Yeah, can I do the pop up here? I can't. It's only. Okay, I can only pop up when I'm at the edge of a water. Okay. Or at the edge of a lip of the water. Okay, so I had to hold on over. Okay. Ah, that makes sense. But yeah, you're, you're falling at, like, terminal velocity. And then you use your arms to grab something. How do your arms not get ripped off? Something that video game characters can do, like, something you can do, like Prince of Persia. I just gotta, okay, I gotta stop pressing to the right. I gotta line myself up. This, this part's annoying. Okay, here we go, here we go, this is the one. I was pressing up. Oh, this is a very specific spot. That allows you to grab, isn't it? Oh wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. No, I gotta press up? I gotta press up at the right time. I do gotta- I gotta press up at- I was just holding up. I gotta press up. Okay, so I just gotta go down and then tap the up button furiously. Basically. Alright. Here we go. Son of a bitch. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Okay, maybe I don't use the joystick for this part. Maybe I use the, uh, the D-pad. Because I can tap the D-pad faster than I can tap the joy. It's got that dead zone. Get out of the way, you stupid thing. Jump a little early. Yes! I finally did it! Good lord! Okay, it's a little damage dismounting that ladder, because... You can... <laughs> your falling distance is very small. Alright. Like, seven dead Jasons later, we finally get through. I'm glad I could make that. What if I failed that jump and I had to do it again? Because, <laughs> like, you know, it didn't save. That'd be annoying. Oh. Well, I guess I'll go forward, because I can't save again. Oh, yeah, Area 5. Okay, this is the glacier area. This is where we want to go. Looks like from here on out, it's some man-made sea. This is gonna suck. Sophia doesn't have much underwater mobility, so getting through this is looking pretty impossible. Can you check and see if there's anything in this area that could help with Sophia's underwater mobility problem? Already on it. Give me another sec here. Looks like I'm getting a signal from the chip that seems like it could help with that, getting Sophia through the, the sea. The chip is in the sea, though. Guess I'll have to dive in and go fetch it out myself. Waters get really rough, so please be careful. So it's saying I'm gonna have to swim on my own, because the tank isn't that useful. That'll be fun. But I'm gonna save that for next time, because we're coming up on two hours, so. This has been a great introduction to Blaster Master Zero. I really like this. I'm really having a good time with this one. Yeah, we'll go back to the title screen. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this first episode of Blaster Master Zero.
I'm really enjoying it. I like that there's a, a split-screen co-op mode. However, I, I, I can only imagine it just makes the game just, like, way too easy. It's fun, though. It's fun to have the option. But, like... Yeah, I don't see an extra difficulty option, so... Uh... It's like it's a it's a really neat thing. I mean, maybe I'm just getting too uh, too jaded about difficulty levels, though, because I mean I have been playing this game. I've I've been playing video games for like a life. For well, I mean, I, I want to say a lifetime, but you know, like my lifetime. You know, I've been playing games for like 30 years since I since I played this game for Nintendo. So 30. 30 years of video gaming experience is going to make things seem easier for a game I already essentially know and has had some things added to it. I, I've had a blast. I'm having a blast with this. And, you know, it's nice to have a game that's too easy for a change, so I play a lot of hard games. It's fine. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Another one thing I want to look at real quick before I go, though. There's like a versus mode, there's two question mark modes. Maybe one of these will be a harder mode or a boss battle mode. In fact, yeah, I bet this is one of those kind of games where like when you beat it the first time, there'll be a hard mode that unlocks. But uh, yeah, there's two extra characters. Uh, Gunvolt and Echo Row. I guess they both have a Sophia, but then they have other abilities like wall jumping it looks like. Well, wait, one person, she can hover, and the other one can wall jump, it looks like. And they've got, like, unique, unique personal weapons. Arrows and lightning bolts and stuff. We'll have to mess with that later, too, maybe. Anyways, I'm glad they added so much to the game. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody! Have a blast. In the past.